Hello YouTube fam, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, my name is Alyssa Marie and I am so happy to have you here. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I always get so many questions about blogging in itself, like how I got started, any advice for someone who wants to start, etc, etc. So I figured why not jump on here and do a whole video just going through my entire blogging journey from the beginning all the way up until now. So let's just jump straight on in. When I first started blogging, I think that was all the way back in like 2016, I want to say. It's like middle 2016. And I don't know, I was like probably most of you watching now who was just makeup obsessed and also just loved to watch videos on YouTube and just into that kind of thing. And I also really, really, from the beginning, I always made sure to only use cruelty-free stuff, but I also started to get really, really interested into product ingredients and only using brands that have less toxic ingredients in it and that kind of thing. So initially when I started blogging, I just started on Instagram. I pretty much transitioned from my personal page at like a thousand followers and I just kind of turned it into a blogging page slowly. So yeah, that was just strictly on Instagram at that point. I hadn't had a YouTube channel and I like it wasn't really in my mind to have one. That's a lie. I feel like it was in my mind, but I was still kind of like, Ooh, like I don't know if I can do all of that. So it was kind of just on the back burner for that time. It wasn't until I big chopped in 2017, so that was December 2017, when I was like, you know what, I want to document this process. So I videoed myself in the car right before my big chop. I set up my little camera at the salon. I videoed that entire whole big chop situation. And I ended up posting it on my Instagram. And I feel like I got a lot of interest in this video. And I feel like that's when I kind of was like, wow. People are really seeing this as a big deal. People really want to know about this and see this journey. And so that's when I decided that I kind of wanted to not completely let go of makeup because honestly, that's still like my passion. I still obsessed with makeup, still product junkie, that's me. But I realized that I also had something very special and unique when it came to my natural hair journey. And it was just something that everyone was interested in. I got lots of questions all the time. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna keep on going with this. I'm gonna keep people updated with my journey and kind of put more of a focus on that and less of a focus on makeup, just simply because that's what I found people were interested in. It wasn't until like February 2018 when I actually got it together and started my YouTube channel with my first video ever. It was like, when I look back on it, I'm like, ugh, cringe. It was just like a really short and sweet one minute video just saying, hey guys, like it's me, like a little intro to my entire YouTube channel. And then I just did a whole bunch of little hair tutorials, etc., etc. So that's pretty much how I got started. When I first started, I obviously was not making any money off it. To be honest, like making money wasn't really in my mind. I wasn't like going into it like, ooh, maybe I can make some extra money, like these bloggers are rich online. I feel like if that's your intention, blogging probably isn't for you because this is really not like a get rich quick scheme kind of thing. Like it's really not. I really just went into it with my passion for these things and it kind of paid off, I guess. So I didn't start getting paid for a while. Like it was a while. And my first post was maybe like a $50 thing on Instagram. It really wasn't until I started to gain a lot of traction on Instagram when I was like, hmm, like I really need to figure out how these bloggers do get paid. I did a lot of research online, like a lot. Went on YouTube, went on Google, read articles, and I just kind of scoured the internet to find out like, how could I get paid? Because it's so much work. It is so much work and so much of your time and effort that goes into it. Mind you, to me, it was fun in a way because it was 
literally like I said it's just my passion like I was happy to share these things but just producing content in general a lot of people don't understand like all of the things that are behind creating a piece of content even just a photo a lot of people think like mm, selfie easy done but there's planning that goes into it I plan ahead for the week usually know what I'm gonna post when I'm being good not always like not always I still have a nine-to-five job right now currently so it is really really hard for me to kind of juggle everything but I try and stay as organized as possible plan content out people just don't understand like how much work goes into this but anyways back to when I first started making money I learned that what bloggers pretty much do is just charge on a per post basis so what I did was I went on this website that I found called canva.com it's actually a really great tool if you like digital creating and stuff um, you can create like Instagram posts little things like it's just a free tool that you can use online to create graphics pretty much so I went on Canva and I created a little media sheet my cute little media sheet and I listed out like Instagram photo for X amount Instagram video for X amount um, YouTube video for X amount the main reason why this media sheet was so important was that when brands started to reach out to me then I could just supply this to them and say hey these are my rates let me know if this works boom bam done so yeah that is pretty much still how it works for me currently except I like to target brands myself as well I feel like people think that brands are just reaching out to bloggers directly and boom done but bloggers actually do a lot of work to actually target brands themselves and reach out to them themselves and say hey this is what I'm capable of this is what I can offer for you are you willing to collaborate with me that's kind of how like the whole brand partnership works um, for me personally I really wanted my pages both on Instagram and YouTube to be very very authentic to me I just wanted it to stay genuine I didn't want it to feel commercially like I was always trying to sell stuff like I really really wanted to stay away from all of that so my main goal when I transitioned into becoming more of a hair blogger was to just encourage women from across the globe to love and embrace their natural curls just the way that I did because I felt like the day of I felt such a transformation and such a light inside of me it was just I don't know it was life-changing for me and I wanted to be able to encourage other people to do that and to experience that for themselves as well like to this day that's really what keeps me going that's really my purpose and my goal for my channels is for people to just love and embrace their natural selves so yeah with that being my main goal I always was very picky like even from the very beginning I was very very picky with which brands that I would work with so for me when it comes to a brand and the type of brands that I will work with they one need to be 100% cruelty free that's something that I've stuck with from day one number two it needs to be relevant to my brand and what I feel so that's pretty much my story I also wrote down I have a few little pieces of advice in case you are thinking about blogging or if you're trying to blog but you feel like it's not going anywhere I have a few pieces of advice from over the past few years things that I've learned and things that I wish that I could tell myself when I first started okay so first piece of advice I kind of went over this a little bit but it's like not bad at all to reiterate this do not get into blogging for the money people will be able to see through that if you're not in it with your passion if you're not putting yourself like fully into this people will be able to see through that and you won't be successful. Also, blogging is a lot of work and especially in the beginning, you do a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot of content creating for free. That's just the nature of the business. You have to start somewhere, build yourself up, and once your followers start to grow, you can then use that to leverage payment. My second piece of advice is to visualize it this is for somebody who's just starting out or even hasn't started yet but it's just been in the back of your mind and you're really considering like how to do it you need to visualize like 
the big picture of what you're trying to achieve. You have to have a purpose behind it and then you also need to visualize what it's going to look like. Are you just going to do Instagram videos and stick to Instagram? Are you going to do YouTube? Are you going to do both? Are you going to write a blog? Are you going to have like a website? You know, visualize your end game goal of like what you want everything to look like. Look at your favorite bloggers on YouTube and Instagram and make notes of what you think makes them stand out and things that you like about them, things that you don't like about them. Just make note of everything. Know what kind of vibe you're trying to bring across. Is it more like a sexy and boom, I'm the shit kind of thing? Or is it more like a bubbly and warm? I would say mine is like kind of more bubbly, fun, goofy. It'll just make it a lot easier for you. And you'll have a better idea of what exactly you need to do in order to achieve it. My next piece of advice is to start and to start small. So firstly is to start. Like I waited so long before I started my YouTube channel. I stalled myself because I was so, I just made myself feel super overwhelmed and I gave myself every single reason why I couldn't start yet. You know, like, oh, I need a nicer camera and I need better lighting and I can't afford that yet and blah, 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 blah. There's always gonna be a hundred reasons why you can't start. You need to find the one reason why you can and just start. So starting in itself is like a major step. And just know that starting small is the whole point of growth. As you go through the process, every time you film and every time you edit, you learn different things. You learn how to articulate yourself better. You learn, oh, like I need to stop saying, um, ah, uh, whatever. Like you literally learn as you go. So it's important to get started as soon as possible. So you can hurry up, learn everything you can possibly learn and then continue to perfect your craft just as you go. Another piece of advice is to find your niche and just stick to it. So you'll be able to find your niche if you listen to your audience. So for example, in my journey, like I said, I started out with makeup, very makeup heavy. And once I started going natural, I realized that that's really what people were interested in, what they wanted to see, what they had questions about. So I was like, you know what, let me place a bigger focus on hair and just do makeup here and there kind of thing, you know? So for me, my natural hair peeps, that's my niche. And when you're creating content, you want to create content with that niche in mind. So I'm creating my content in mind of a person who is going through a natural hair journey, who is thinking about big chopping, and that helps you to create content that is going to be useful for people. When you're creating useful content, that is when you are going to grow. All right, and then once you have your niche, you got to post and you got to post consistently. So that's my next piece of advice is consistency. It is so important. You got to show up all the time. They got to know Alyssa posts videos on YouTube every Sunday. Every Sunday, they're going to log on and wait for that video. If you are haphazardly producing content here and there, people are gonna forget about you, honestly. Like there's so many bloggers and so many different things to see online nowadays. You wanna be in people's face constantly, all the time. It's super, super important to be consistent. And then as you're going through your whole blogging career, it's really, really important to continue to set goals for yourself. That's one thing that I actually learned recently is something as simple as that was like a huge like night and day difference for me in terms of the type of content I'm creating. Like in terms of everything really, like setting goals is so important. Like for me, I have a set list of brands that I have as my target brands, brands that I would love to collaborate with. By just listing out those brands and just like having that in the back of my mind saying, okay, this is my target, that helps me to gear my content towards that. And that way I'll be able to position myself for an opportunity to work with that brand. You need to have your goals, like they need to be clear set goals so that you know exactly like what you're working towards and how to get there. Because if there's no destination, like you're just kind of like in the air doing nothing. So you need to have goals, set them, write them down. I actually have a really, really great app 
I guess it's an app and it's also a website called Trello. That is where I have my little vision board. My whole social media life is like planned out on Trello. So I have a board for my content planning, any content ideas I have for like YouTube, Instagram. I list it out all in there. I have a board for my vision board. So that's where I set all my goals, target brands, etc. Um, I have a board for like a to-do list. It's just a really amazing tool. So check it out. I will also link it below. All right, and then my last piece of advice is something you may have gathered already from this entire long drawn out video is that this is a journey. Just as any kind of career path is like a path, it's a journey, something you've got to work towards continuously. Blogging is the same way. So it's very, very easy to look online and see other bloggers who have already made it and think like, oh, I can do that. That's easy. Like, I'm cute. I can take cute selfies too. Like, it's fine. It's a really long journey and it's hard. There's a lot that goes into content creating. It's definitely one of those things where what you put into it is definitely what you'll get out of it. There is no way that you're going to work your ass off producing amazing content and not get noticed. If you are putting in your work, it'll happen. It'll happen in its time. It's really important to not look at other people and say, oh, she's growing faster than me. Um, I definitely, definitely was guilty of that in the beginning. And I would get on myself and there'd be a lot of self-doubt and a lot of tears and me wanting to give up all the time. And honestly, that still happens today. But you just have to know that everything happens in its time and if you are putting in the work, you will get the reward. You will. Just It's just a matter of you just keep on going and that's it. You, you got this. You, you watching right now, you got this and you can do this. Boom! That's it. Drops mic. Wow, I feel like I spoke forever. If you guys have any additional questions, please comment them below. I really hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. If you did, please go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up. And also, if you aren't subscribed, I'm judging you. Just subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be notified every single time a new video drops. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.